This time on the show, we challenge you to respond and then we'll authenticate. Yeah, that's right, we're getting challenge response authentication, plus two-factor authentication for SSH using the Google Authenticator and how to not lock yourself out of your own workstation like Darren did. All that and more this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Ting. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And this is your weekly dose of Technoloss. And we are getting into some awesome stuff this week. That's right. We're doing challenge really response sure what authentication. Oh. A little bit of keyboard interactive for oh, yeah. uh, SSH. Some, some questions and answers. Yeah. We're okay. going gonna to send some packets to some clients and then those clients will send some packets back to the server and oh, then they'll yes. be BFFs. Oh yes. Ones and some O's and some one ones. Oh, some, O's. some more O's and ones. Yeah. I like those. Yeah, those Ooh, are the good ones. Oreos. Yeah. Chocolate covered Oreos. Yeah. Delicious. And then we're going to be adding second factor of authentication <laughs> in our uh, SSH using, like we did last time, using uh, nice. the YubiKey. Yes. That was actually that was using awesome. password authentication because you would type in your oh. password and then at the end of it you would press the button. And so it would be like a really long password that's both your password and the, anyway, hey, and the YubiKey string. You, you got to see over the weekend the Golden Gate Bridge, the fireworks and stuff. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, I did hear. Did you miss it? Yeah, uh, I missed it. I was well, doing stuff. It was pretty spectacular. I got some some George Orwell esque reporting of it <laughs> on, up on, uh, Google on the Google Pluses. Yeah, well, it did. I mean, there was like searchlights everywhere, and when you take the long exposure, it looks like trace arounds when the, when the planes are going by, and you know there's explosions. And I don't know. I'm not that's inciting awesome. terror or anything. I'm just having fun. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's what they all say. We'll, we'll say that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. Yes. You ready? Cool. I'm so ready. Okay. Well, challenge response authentication. Um, there are a couple of, of a good examples of it that you can really think of. I mean, really, all it is is just a like question and answer. Somebody yeah. just like pops you a question, and then you answer with something, and it's, it's what it's you like want. It's like what I do whenever I have to log into my banking account. I have to do it every time. Well, there's here's some other examples. I used to do this back in the uh, the 90s. A little video game called Wolfenstein 3D: Spear of Destiny. <gasps> Oh. And so the those old games back then, their idea of copy protection, you know, back before like you know the disc and the drive, um, yeah. was uh, was to ask you a question from the manual. Oh, so they would be like, what page or page ninety six, paragraph two? What is the first word or something yeah, like that? Yes, exactly. Okay. I remember specifically because I played Spear of Destiny so much that they would ask like. What is, you know, the last name of Hans, the boss on level seven? I'm like, that's ah. Hans Gross or something. Nice. I don't know. Like, there <laughs> were a bunch awesome. of, and like, eventually you just remember them all and uh, don't have to look yeah, them up. Course. I mean, our, our, you know, honestly, our, our copy was pirated. And yes, we had like a Xerox copy of the manual. So that, that wasn't really a good example. Um, here's an example where hopefully there aren't Xerox copies floating around. This right here is a, uh, for demonstration purposes, we will have a little fun with this thing called Dryad. It's a, um, it's a way of doing challenge and response that the U.S. military uses, oh. and I, I'd say this is probably more like a fallback because this is old school, like paper, like yeah. symmetric keys up in paper, yo. Um, kind of similar to what the British have with their BATCOM, okay. but uh, here's the way this works, right? So we've got these, these crazy sheets here. You can check these out, Paul. Yes. And so Shannon and I now are going to authenticate each other, say like pretend we're in the battlefield and we're on our radios, and I want to make sure Shannon is who she says she is, because I don't want to be talking to, you know, some poser, right? Yeah, right. Or some man in the middle or whatever. Of course. Okay, so in this case, the way that it works is that you, me, the challenger, I would pick two letters. So you see there's a whole bunch of letters going down the, uh, the first side. column, A through Y, mm -hmm. and, then, uh, 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 and then there are all of these different columns, zero through nine. So there are ten yep. columns here, right? So now I pick a letter, any letter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose golf or G. Okay. Okay. And then I will pick a letter from one of these different columns, right? And so I just go across this row and I find a letter that I like. I'm just going to go with the first letter, T for tango. Okay. So I would say to you, golf tango. And so you, being the ch challenger, you respond with whatever the next letter down is. Apple. Uh, a for apple. Or, or alpha or, or whatever <laughs> have you. But yeah, there you go. And so we could, you know, go all at this like all day long. I could go like... Sierra Papa. Frodo Gandalf. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's not F, right. <laughs> F. Turn Frodo. Egg. Frodo and then Gandalf. And then be Echo. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. 
Got it. Um, I think it's Foxtrot. But anyway, <laughs> well, I digress. I like, and so the like idea with these <laughs> is that every day or every so many hours, these things get cycled. They destroy the old okay. ones. And you can so use So they always to, have something different. Yeah, and you, this kind of reminds me of the, um, the, what was that password generator that I used a few episodes oh, yeah. back where I actually had a printout. And every time you generated a new one, it would be different. Huh. Kind of yeah, similar. That's, that's cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, forget what we'll have to. It's definitely not like two. We'll have to look that one up and uh, and put that in the show notes. Yeah. Well, uh, the other um, thing that we're going to be talking about later today is keyboard interactive. Okay, and that was defined in a draft to the IETF uh, or the Internet Engineering Task Force back <laughs> in 04 by two Googlers that uh, basically describes it as a generic message exchange authentication for SSH. Right. And the idea with that is. Just the ability to, in addition to say, you know, just a regular password, or in lieu of the SSH key pairs that we've been mm -hmm. doing, just have like some different questions. So like I could just say, you know, what is your favorite color, or what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Oh well, it depends on the swallow. Is it African or European? Okay, thank you. I was like, <laughs> I was getting nervous there for just a second, <laughs> and. Um, and so that's the premise. Between. I mean, you run into that all the time, like when you log into your bank, right? Yeah, that's true. I do. And those, those security questions that they, we all They kind of suck and everybody knows the answers to them. <laughs> like, well, what was my first cat's name? What was it? I'm not going to tell you. Well, see, that's a horrible <laughs> challenge and response, though. I love the ones where they, well, first of all, I never give the real answer. Yeah. Uh, it's like, where did I you go to high school? I was trying to do something where, like, I'll, I'll, I'll do, like, where did you go to high school? But I won't answer with my high school. I'll answer with something like... Uh, like my best friend in high school or oh, my okay. first ex-boyfriend that I had in high school or something like that. So mm. it's it's a reminder of an actual answer. Ah, I like that. Yeah. I like the ones where they let you come up with what, like your own questions. Oh, yes. Because I, I like to Those use... Are good. And <laughs> I have a special answer for that one. Oh, my God. But, uh, <laughs> all right, so let's get into wow. some other like examples of how uh, challenge and response authentication would work between a client and a server. Say you're trying to SSH in okay. somewhere. And so, challenge response authentication. And so, in this example, we're going to use obviously a client. A client's name is Darren. And a server. And the server. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon is singing to us in SSH, uh, up into your heart. And so the client in this case would say to the server, yo, what's up, dog? Let's be best friends. And so we're just going to put hello. Hey, bro. Hey, I bro. heard you like servers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so the server, in this, in this example of a challenging response, uh, the server is going to say, cool, yeah, let's be BFFs, but uh, what's your password. Okay. And then the client would respond back with my password is foo. But we know that's bad because <laughs> if you had a man in the middle, they could they would see what your thing is. Yep. They would see your password. Cool, man. Let's be BFFs. Yeah, and then over here is uh, this this dude or this chick Eve, the eavesdropper? <laughs> and now what Eve knows is uh, I don't know your password. Yep. Not a very so good foo. challenge in response authentication, if I do say so myself. Yeah. However, there's another way to go about it. Here's an example that's used a lot, and and this is using a one-way hash. And so we've talked a little bit about one-way hashes in the past. You know that we've talked about how um, SHA or SHA or yeah. MD5 are used to hash the, um, the key fingerprint for yes. that server. So you keep that in your known host file and you always know like, hey, if this changes, it's not mm -hmm. right. And you store a hash equivalent of that, right? Right. Well, the way that these hashes work is that it takes an input, you know, it could be anything, and it creates a value out of that that is computationally, we'll just say, infeasible or expensive to reverse from that what it originally was. So it's too hard to do. Yes. So you, you give it some input, you get some crazy output that yeah. looks all you know funky and it's not, you know, and 
there's a bunch of math involved, our favorite thing there. <laughs> and so, like I said, some popular ones like MD5 and SHA. And so we we'll use MD5 as an example here of okay. how perhaps a proper challenge and response authentication mechanism should work. So in this case, again, the client says, yo B, let's be friends. Yo dog. And in this case, the server responds back with a challenge. And that challenge is a random number. We're just going to call it R. But okay. this right here, it stands for random. And we're not going to get into a discussion about entropy and pseudo-randomness and other stuff, but like suffice it to say, this was like totally made up. Pick a number between 7 and 9. <laughs> Not many myths numbers to choose from. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. We'll eight? Get into, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so we'll choose like eight, right? And that's our <laughs> random number. Okay. okay. And so we send this random number <laughs> over to our client. And so what our client does is it doesn't send back its password, like in this horrible example of what we'll call lame-ass authentication. Okay. Um, what it does is it uses, in this case we're using MD5, to do a response. Okay. And that response is, uh, the, is we concatenate our password. That is just add. We're just going to okay. add our password. <laughs> like, what? So P for password okay. plus R for that random. And so if you actually, you can do this in the command line. Type MD5 sum space, whatever you want, and it'll give you, you know, the result. Oh, cool. So if you say echo uh, your password into MD5 sum, you'll get one result. Oh. But if you do, in this case, uh, echo your password eight, then you're going to get a different response, right? Oh, and it'll look completely different. It won't just be like the hash and then an eight at the end. No, no, because what you've given it, the input that you've given to that one-way hash, is a um, is is unique. It's different. You've changed it now. It's okay. not just your password. And so what we're going to send back is a response to the server. That is basically this MD5 result from your password concatenated with that random number we were given, okay. aka the challenge. Now here's the thing: the server, server over here, it knows what your password is. Yes. Not going to get into the technical bits, but we did it talk about Pam a little bit the yeah. other week. But yeah, it's, so it takes your password. Mm -hmm. It also takes that random number that it just sent you, aka the challenge, mm -hmm. and it does. The same thing oh, it does its with own. MD5. So right? it can match it up whenever it sees yours. Yes. And so if these guys match up, then the server knows obviously you must know your password. Yeah. Because the only way that these two things are going to match is if your password and the random number are the same. Okay? With is that. Is this salted? That's the idea, is you're salting yes. your password with that random value that it sent you. The ah. challenge. And so when you send Ooh, it back, then it's like, cool, now we can be BFF. And our hacker over here, Eve, whereas before it knew your password, mm -hmm. now all Eve knows is that the random number was 8. And the result of your MD5 of your password and your random number was whatever this is. It's going to oh. be like, you know, if it's foo, if your password was foo and the random number was 8, then the calculation would look something like foo 8. And then we'll MD5 that. And so we'll get a result. And we'll say that it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because that's the code on my luggage. And, <laughs> and so now all Eve has is it's 1, 2, one, 3, two, four, 4, 5, and 8. And so now. But if she tries to send 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the server, the server's going to be like, that doesn't match with the password plus random MD5 hash. Well, that's the beautiful thing about this. Because it would be different. In this example, we've been using uh, just a random number of 8. Well, mm -hmm. first of all, it's not going to be, it's, it's different every single time for every session. So when you try to log in again, I might come up with a random number between 3 and 5. And I'll ask you oh, four. Okay, okay, whatever, right? So I'm using <laughs> really small seeds here to make things simple, like yeah. foo and 8. But the other beautiful thing about this is, okay, if, is if we were, yeah, okay. if we were only to use a single number for our challenge, and we had such a small password as foo, yeah. then yes, you could brute force that because mm -hmm. you could basically come up with a table of all the three-letter words and all the one-digit numbers, and and I don't know what the math is on that, but it's not very long. Yeah. You could do MD5 on each of those. And then you would have a table, like a rainbow table. So moral of the story is don't use foo as your password. That's way <laughs> <Yes>. too short. <laughs> well, the other thing is, 
you know, this this eight here, it isn't an eight. It's actually sixteen. You know, oh. at, at least yeah. like it could be it's really a ton of big. Digits, yeah. It could be really the bigger the better, right? And then you use those like forty character oh, passwords dude. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I just I actually so. just doubled my um, my password by oh taking my, my forty character password and then typing it a second time, but I changed one of the bits in the middle. Wow. I know there's some stuff about how computationally that's not as good as if I were to make an eighty character unique one because I doubled some. I, I have a lot of repeats, but dude. I got an 80 character password. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's but, a lot you know, better than anything When I take I that have. and this whatever, say it's a 16-bit challenge, boom, we've got a really long response. And I'm sorry, dude. You know, Eve might be able to crack Foo and 8, yeah. but they're not going to crack that. Ah. And so... So I'm, I'm assuming when you send back this MD5, um, the, the random number and the password response, mm -hmm. It's being hashed before you're sending it out, and that's why she can only see the yes. hashed yeah, response. Yes. Yeah, you do this calculation, this MD5, your password plus your, uh, uh, the, the random number there, mm -hmm. that's done on your happy little computer okay. over here. It's not done like in, in the, the cloud in the or whatever. Cloud so you do that, you do the math here, and okay. then you send the result over to there, and then the server, which is evil, I'm doing that for you. Of course. It does the same. Where is Evil Server? Math. Oh, there he is. And so if they match up, they're all good and everybody's happy. Cool. Yeah. I like it. And that's the fundamentals of how a lot of different authentication mechanisms work. We've talked about, well, I, I guess we haven't gone into it in detail, but it's kind of similar to how some of the bigger ones like, like Kerberos works. Yes. And so that's fun because we never transmit the password mm -hmm. in the clear because clear text sucks and yeah, no kidding. Yeah, and I just so ran along another fashion website that I wanted to buy a bunch of dresses from, Clairtext, mm -hmm. and I tweeted to them too. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, you need to fix this, and I sent them to Plain Text Offenders. Wow. And they were like, we're on it, so sorry. And I was like, wow, first people to actually tweet me back and say they're going to fix it. Cool. So we'll see how long it takes. All right, time. Shannon, changing authentication for the better, one <laughs> fashion website at a time. Um, and the fashion so websites. the obvious weakness here is that if this number ever gets doubled, yeah. you know, if we ever ask the same random number twice in a row, mm -hmm. then the attacker could basically, without knowing the password, just pass that same hash over again. Right. However, we use long enough random numbers that it's very unlikely that we would ask the same random number twice in a row. Okay. Or, or, or twice ever. Okay. So that's the idea there. And uh, so with that, we are now going to, to move on to keyboard interactive. Yes. AKA challenge response authentication for SSH so that we can use our Google Authenticator to log into our SSH server. It's going to be fun, happy time. Love two factor authentication. You're going to be doing that for yep, us? Just a bit. Awesome. Let's take a quick break though. By now you've heard us talk about Ting. They're the sensible alternative to the crazy contracts that you're gonna find at the major cell phone carriers. Well, their customer first approach to service and their pricing model is a breath of fresh air. Simply pay for what you use. Minutes, messages, megabytes, they're all billed separately. In fact, you hardly even have to consider what plan to choose since Ting will automatically bump you up or down depending on what you use. So stop paying for service that you aren't using or getting penalized for using too much. Head over to Ting dot com slash fact five to learn more and if you sign up through this URL you'll get a $75 credit onto your first month of service. Again that's ting.com slash hack five.